Hey, hello. Today uh, we're going to be taking a quick look at Compliance Manager from Microsoft, uh, which is included in your G3 or higher uh, subscriptions. And uh, there are many new templates that can be utilized as well as allowing you to customize your templates. Uh, Compliance Manager, first and foremost, if you've never heard of Compliance Manager, it does sit in the Purview Compliance Center, which I'll show you in just a second. But this is our solution. It's a feature of uh, Microsoft 365 Compliance Purview Compliance Center that will help you manage uh, and maintain your organization's governance, risk, and compliance requirements uh, with far greater ease than spreadsheets or other third-party tools because A, it's integrated into uh, Office 365. B, uh, it can be uh, enabled or enacted upon from the secure score uh, from security.microsoft.com or uh, the things that you uh, modify or deploy inside Compliance Manager can impact your secure score. Things you uh, implement in secure score can implement your uh, can affect in a positive way your compliance score so with all that said let's take a quick look here so coming into the compliance center at compliance.microsoft.com this is our microsoft purview compliance center uh, you will see the compliance manager at the very top of the page and in here uh, I'm going to start over here uh, at the left hand side before I describe what these things are, but you will see a great number of vast number of templates. I believe there's over a thousand templates now uh, and you can select any of these templates based upon your needs. Again, policy or requirement. There are some templates that are included out of the box, like CMMC, NIST 853, Data Protection Baseline. And then you'll see that there are premium templates in here. And if I did a quick uh, look for a form like in California, uh, Database Breach Notification, SB 1386, you would see that there is a policy for that. So there's many policies based upon the not, not only uh, US uh, regulations, or laws or requirements, but also state laws and requirements. Um, there's also, and what I'm gonna be showing you today is from a perspective of uh, records management, that we have a National Archives Universal Electronic Records Management ERM requirements uh, template in here. And I've already added this template, but to add it, I would simply select the template and then save, uh, and that template would be in, in my organization's um, assessments. And if you want to extend or distend, uh, one of my customers, they had a NIST 800-171 requirement, and um, they used the NIST 800-171 template, uh, but they came back to me and said, hey, our auditor only audits these uh, 124 controls, and Microsoft, you've got 296 controls, in your uh, NIST 800-171. So we took our template and then we removed or redacted, um, uh, deprecated uh, 152 items uh, from that, no, 172 items, like 172 and 124 is 296. So um, did the math right? That's, that's hard to do late on a Friday afternoon. But again, they removed the 172 items they didn't need, leaving them with the 124 controls that they did need. So again, you can create your own and we've got a nice little sample file for you to work a, a template of a template, so to speak. Uh, and um, if, if not, you can start with one of our templates and either extend it with additional controls or distend it. Don't know if that's the proper term, uh, but remove, deprecate uh, some of our controls out of there. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Now, getting back to the overview here, and again, we'll be wrapping up here in just a couple of seconds, but you can see that on this National Archives, and again, if we have multiple regulations that we want to adhere to, we, like maybe we've got CGIS or CMMC or high tech or IRS Pub 1075 or NIST 853. We could throw these all in here and I could see what my over, overall score is against all of these regulations. Um, or again, I can do this and have uh, as little as my one 
uh, filter here. And we also group these in solutions by solution area or Microsoft solution. We can um, group these in by action type if it's technical or procedural or documentation, operational, management, privacy uh, that integrates well with our Priva uh, capabilities. Um, we can group these and put them together because maybe I've got a Department of Corrections or a state patrol that has to adhere to uh, a, a CMM or CGIS, criminal justice information systems. Maybe I've got a, a tax or permitting org that has to adhere to FTI. So again, um, I can determine which groups and which areas have which controls uh, and regulations uh, applied to them in which categories here as well. So the beautiful thing here um, is that uh, we can, again, uh, just look at these and apply uh, the regulations that we need to apply and apply those regulations to the to the tenancy or the user's domains that um, we need to add, add, apply them to. The next thing you'll notice is once I apply these, this is a shared responsibility model. So you will see the things that Microsoft is doing out of the box. We are a very compliant service. We comply with Pub 1075. We comply with FTI. We comply with CGIS. We comply with uh, FedRAMP and FISMA and uh, a wide variety of regulations out there. So in this case, again, we are providing 100% coverage, 131 out of 131 possible points. But in this case, my tenancy here, we're only achieving 90 out of 900. So we've got quite a long ways to go. And then you might ask, OK, through your gamification of compliance, governance, risk, and compliance, I've got this score here, and that's great, but how can I improve or how can I enhance that? And I'm glad you asked, because right over here, you're going to see key improvement areas, and we relevance rank these by the number of points that you're going to get, the ease of implementation from a uh, administrative perspective and the disruption from an end user. The lower the disruption, the higher ranked this would be. But if you wanted to see all of the improvement actions that you can make, you can click on the improvement actions here at the top, uh, simply enough, and it will show you all of the improvement actions that you could use. And I saw one there, apply sensitive uh, sensitivity labels to protect financial information. And so I'm gonna click on that one and you'll see that not only does it tell us what improvement action we can make, but exactly what that improvement action is, how we need to make that, how to use the Microsoft solution to implement or enforce. We can learn more about sensitivity labels. We can launch this now. Uh, we can see what requirements or uh, prereqs exist out there. And then from there, how many points are we going to get? We're going to get 27. We're getting zero of those today. This is in our NARA, Universal Electronic Records Management Group. It's being managed by our organization, and this is assigned to Deborah Berger. And I can click reassign here if I wanted to find somebody. Maybe Deborah's going out on vacation or leave. I'm going to reassign this to Bob Key. He's a key employee, but you can see that he's a contractor, a consultant. He's outside of our organization. He's a guest. So you can have contractors, consultants uh, 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 in, involved in this process as well. So again, I, could, I can reassign. I can assign these uh, to particular people, and we're off to the races. From there, um, once I learn about this capability and I launch it, I might want to set an implementation plan so I can change my status from not implemented to implemented or alternative solution. If we have an alternative solution, then it's going to make the score go away, the 27 points that we would have had here. If this is out of scope, it's going to take that uh, denominator, numerator, denominator, the denominator and make those 27 points go away. So an alternative implementation that we've tested and uh, proved is up and running will give us 27 out of 27. Our built-in solution will give you 27 out of 27. And if it's out of scope, then you're going to have zero of zero here. So again, just uh, keep that in mind uh, that when you determine if something is in scope, out of scope, implemented or not implemented or planned, 
Uh, and then we can go ahead and create our implementation plan. We can also have a test plan in here and we can automatically test these things. So the minute we implement or create a sensitivity label and apply sensitivity labels to protect sensitive data, uh, we will get those 27 uh, points. But again, we could test this manually instead of automatically. And then uh, this will show you what uh, controls are actually being impacted by this. For example, we do have uh, some financial impact here. We've got NIST 853, we've got CMMC level five. And again, once we do this once, we will get those points across the multiple regulations and control IDs. So this is important, you know, you, you won't have to do this each and every time, uh, or you won't have to do the same thing 10 times. It's going to account for uh, any of the groups or any of the templates assessments that you use. And then lastly, when we get through our testing, and are good to go, we can add documentation or links to our documents if they're in a SharePoint repository, for example, which would be a great place for these kinds of documents. Pop them in SharePoint, put the link in here, name that evidence, and away you go, or simply upload the document. So we could browse to and upload those documents uh, right here and, and keep them inside of the Compliance Manager uh, ready, ready for us to go. And again, um, the beautiful thing that you'll notice here, if you just love those spreadsheets, you can't live without the spreadsheets, you can generate uh, reports from the Compliance Center and you can export uh, the, this content here uh, and be off to the races as well. So if I wanted to export, maybe I want to select some of these items, uh, filter them, I can do that but I can go ahead and, and export a report and then uh, work uh, from that report. And again, I can look at a group or a category or a solution, and I can lump these together like Microsoft Information Protection, Data Lifecycle Management, Audit Controls. So I can see by area the different controls that um, I have to improve upon uh, to get increase or have a better score. And then lastly, I mentioned that you could manually test so we can turn on automatic testing, turn off automatic testing, or select the individual things that we want to test. Um, so that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. With that, uh, just lastly, uh, as a recap, and these slides are available for download, this shows the overall compliance uh, center and the compliance manager uh, and our score and improvement actions, all the different things that I just went through. Uh, in a hurry up fashion, but we've got our score, we've got our key improvement actions, we've got our assessment and our assessment templates and templates that we can build, uh, and we've got our settings here for how, how we can set, set the solution up. So this walks through each of those individual components that I just mentioned, the solutions that affect our score, our compliance score break breakdown. At the very bottom of that page, and I didn't show you, but when we are looking at uh, individual items, you will see a breakdown by location area. So um, if we just bounce back here to compliance uh, manager, we look at our overall score at the bottom of this page, and shame on me for not scrolling down here, you'll see those solution uh, areas by score breakdown. So uh, protecting information, we're at 0%. Governing information, uh, we're at 80%. So we're, we're seeing that we've got 36 out of 45 points just in this govern area, uh, which is very important for electronic records management and compliance management here. So this is a, a beautiful tool to help you get uh, your arms around uh, that which is compliance today and help you manage your compliance, uh, governance, risk, and compliance. Uh, and again, uh, these slides are available uh, for you. We've walked through the filtering. We've walked through the improvement actions. We looked at an actual improvement action in the details and the implementation plan and talked a little bit about these solution areas that you can lump them into. With that, I just wanna thank you for your time today. Uh, greatly appreciate you taking a look at this video uh, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be deploying Compliance Manager in the not too distant future. Bye for now.